Welcome to the RAF IP Reference and Installation Guide. This is a general guideline for installation and connections, not a programming video. In this video, we will define VOIP communication and required system components, discuss three basic VOIP installation types within the elevator industry, review required supervision per the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, Chapter 1, IP, Communication and System Components. VOIP, also referred to as IP, stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol, which is the ability to provide voice over a network or internet connection. To make a call, a telephone is connected to a network device, not to be mistaken with phone service provided by a local cable company, such as Spectrum or Comcast, where you are connecting to a phone modem. In order to install an IP phone or phone system into a building, you need an IP network with internet and a firewall, a building router, and a network switch. The building's network must also be on a backed up power source. POE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet, is required to power an IP-based phone when installed directly in the elevator. A PoE switch uses the power for its operation, injecting that into the same Ethernet connection that the phone uses for voice communication. This is the typical setup for an IP phone mounted in the elevator. There is a PoE network connection from the elevator phone to a local network switch, which is tied to the building's network. Chapter 2 Non-Supervised Installations we will begin by discussing three non-supervised installations. Installation number one, existing RAF 2100 series analog phone. The first type of installation occurs when you already have a RAF 2100 series analog phone installed in the elevator or have added a new 2100 series phone to replace a non-compatible model. To allow this phone to communicate on an IP phone system, a remote IP interface is needed. The IP interface requires backed up power to meet code requirements. Installation number two, new RAF 2100 series IP phone. The second type of installation is when a RAF 2100 series IP phone is installed directly into the elevator. This type of setup requires a minimum CAT 5E cable between the phone and a network switch with PoE Plus on the connection. Installation number three, IP communication system. The last type of installation is a complete IP communication system. You can utilize this system with analog phones, IP phones, or a combination of the two. The system normally includes a command center base station with a distribution module, a power supply, and phones in each machine room. Chapter three, three types of wiring examples. Wiring example number one, existing RAF 2100 series analog phone. First, we will demonstrate the wiring for a 2100 series analog phone in the elevator. It will require an IP interface, 2100 VOIP, and an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, RP7700100. Here's an example of an in-car 2100 series analog smartphone. 1. The analog phone requires either 120 volt or 24 volt power and at minimum a single twisted shielded communication pair in the travel cable. The phone line and connections are sent through the travel cable. The phone requires standard programming for operation. 2. Take the twisted shielded pair from the RJ11 jack on the phone up the travel cable to the 2100 VOIP, either installed in the machine, electrical, or network room on that floor. Connect the pair to the FXS port on the 2100 VOIP. 3. Connect the 2100 VOIP to the RP7700100. At this point, you will need to program the 2100 VOIP with a laptop if you have not already done so. 4. Next, connect the network connection from the 2100 VOIP to a connection on a local network switch via an Ethernet cable. Wiring example number 2. New RAF 2100 series IP phone. Next, we will demonstrate the wiring when a new 2100 series IP phone is installed in the elevator. 
This setup requires a connection to a PoE Plus network switch and a minimum CAT 5E network cable into the elevator. Here is an example of an in-car 2100 series IP smartphone. 1. The IP smartphone will directly connect via the CAT 5E run in the travel cable. It is terminated with an RJ45 connection on both ends. The IP smartphone is also powered from this PoE Plus connection. The phone requires standard programming for operation. It also requires the IP information to be programmed via laptop. 2. Next, take the CAT 5E run up the travel cable and connect to the PoE Plus connection on the network switch, either installed in the machine, electrical, or network room on that floor. Wiring example number 3, IP communication system. The final wiring demonstration is for a complete system using analog phones, IP phones, or a combination of the two. We will discuss both an analog and IP installation. RATH provides an IP questionnaire to be filled out and returned with all required IP information so that the system can be pre-programmed. The components for this system include a smartphone, command center base station with distribution module, power supply, RP7700104, router, network switch, machine room phone, 2300-630RC, IP interfaces, 2100 VOIP and 2100 VOIP2, and a UPS RP7700100. Analog Phone Wiring 1. Connect the in-car analog phone to the 2100 VOIP2 via the travel cable. The 2300-630RC also connects to the 2100 VOIP2. 2. The 2100 VOIP2 must be connected to the RP7700100. 3. The 2100 VOIP2 plugs into the existing network switch that is connected to the in-building network. IP phone wiring. 1. Take the Ethernet connection from the in-car IP phone to the local network switch. 2. Next, connect the 2300-630RC to the 2100 VOIP. Connect the 2100 VOIP to the existing network switch that is connected to the in-building network. The 2100 VOIP must be connected to the RP7700100. 3. Now, on the main floor, Connect the IP Command Center's distribution module to the building router 4. Plug the power connection of the distribution module to the RP7700104. 5. Then run a single twisted shielded pair from the distribution module to the command center. If there are multiple lobby stations, run an additional pair to each lobby unit from the distribution module. Chapter 4, Communication Failure. The code referenced in this section is the ASME 2.27.1.1.6. The two-way communication means within the car shall include a means to verify the operability of the telephone line. If the telephone line or equivalent means is not functional, an audible and illuminated visual signal shall be activated by the fire recall switch. If communication line supervision is required, the installation differs slightly and additional equipment is needed. We will outline four communication failure scenarios. These include a standalone analog phone, an analog phone as part of an IP system, a standalone IP phone, and an IP phone as part of an IP system. Scenario number one standalone analog phone. This application requires an IP interface, 2100 VOIPLC, UPS, RP7700104, and an elevator communications failure enunciator, 2100 alarm. 1. Run the single twisted shielded pair to the 2100 VOIPLC. The IP setup for this device is the same as the 2100 VOIP. This allows the phone to ping the network to ensure proper communication. 2. Connect the 2100 VOIP LC power to the RP7700104. 
3. Connect the IP connection of the 2100 VOI PLC to the network switch via an Ethernet cable. Remember to run the alarm contact on the elevator phone to the 2100 alarm. Scenario number 2. Analog phone as part of an IP system. RATH provides an IP questionnaire to be filled out and returned with all required IP information so that the system can be pre-programmed. The system includes a machine room phone, 2300-630RC, IP interfaces, 2100-VOIP and 2100-VOIP-LC, IP supervisor, 2500-VOIPM, command center base station with distribution module, power supply, RP7700104, elevator communications failure annunciator, 2100 alarm, and an analog phone from CAR. 1. Run the single twisted shielded pair to the 2100 VOI PLC. The IP setup for this device is the same as the 2100 VOIP. This allows the phone to ping the network to ensure proper communication. 2. Connect the 2100 VOIP LC power to the RP7700104. 3. Connect the IP connection of the 2100 VOIP LC to the network switch via an Ethernet cable. 4. Connect the 2300-630RC to the 2100 VOIP. 5. Connect the IP connection of the 2100 VOIP to the network switch via an Ethernet cable. Connect the 2100 VOIP power to the RP7700104. Remember to run the alarm contact on the elevator phone to the 2100 alarm. 6. Down on the main floor, connect the IP command center's distribution module to the building router utilizing an Ethernet cable. 7. Plug the power connection of the distribution module to the RP7700104. 8. Then, run a single twisted shielded pair from the distribution module to the main command center. If there are multiple lobby stations, run an additional pair to each lobby unit from the distribution module. 9. Connect the 2500 VOIPM to the building router using an Ethernet cable. This pings all of the other system devices on the network to ensure functioning communication pathways. 10. Plug the power connection of the 2500 VOIPM to the RP7700104. 11. Run the relay contact of the 2500 VOIPM to the 2100 alarm. Scenario number 3, Standalone IP Phone. This application requires an IP supervisor, 2500 VOIPM, power supply, RP7700104, and an elevator communications failure enunciator, 2100 alarm. 1. Take the CAT 5E run up the travel cable to the PLE Plus connection on the network switch. 2. Connect the 2500 VOIPM utilizing an Ethernet cable. This pings all of the IP elevator phones on the network to ensure functioning communication pathways. 3. Plug the power connection of the 2500 VOIPM to the RP7700104. 4. Run the relay contact of the 2500 VOIPM to the 2100 alarm. Scenario number 4. IP phone as part of an IP system. RATH provides an IP questionnaire to be filled out and returned with all required IP information so that the system can be pre-programmed. The system includes a machine room phone, 2300-630RC, UPS, RP7700100, IP interface device, 2100 VOIP, IP Supervisor, 2500 VOIPM, Command Center Base Station with Distribution Module, Power Supply, RP7700104, and an Elevator Communications Failure Annunciator, 2100 Alarm. 1. Take the CAT 5E run up the travel cable to the PLE Plus connection on the network switch. 2. Connect the 2300-630RC to the 2100 VOIP. 
Three, connect the 2100 VOIP power to the RP7700100. Four, connect the IP connection of the 2100 VOIP to the network switch via an Ethernet cable. Five, down on the main floor, connect the IP command center's distribution module into the building router using an Ethernet cable. Six, plug the power connection of the distribution module to the RP7700104. Seven, then run a single twisted shielded pair from the distribution module to the command center. If there are multiple lobby stations, run an additional pair to each lobby unit from the distribution module. 8. Connect the 2500 VOIPM to the building router using an Ethernet cable. This pings all of the system devices on the network to ensure functioning communication pathways. 9. Plug the power connection of the 2500 VOIPM to the RP7700104. 10. Run the relay contact of the 2500 VOIPM to the 2100 alarm. Chapter 5. Connecting to the Outbound Phone Line If you are connecting to an analog phone line, take the RJ11 connection on the analog communication line from the existing phone system to the TWT port within the Command Center distribution module. If you are using an extension off an existing IP phone system, it requires an additional 2100 VOIP, which would be registered as a third-party SIP endpoint. Connect the FXS port of the 2100 VOIP to the TWT port of the distribution module. If you have any questions or require further information, please contact RATH directly. To learn how to program our IP system, sign up for our technical training webinar. Our dependable, high-quality, made-in-the-USA products are truly protecting what matters.